Hello, and welcome to this introductory webinar on genome browsing, searching, and alignment on Biopsych.org. Note that access to most Biopsych databases, including several in this webinar, requires a Biopsych subscription. Some features also require you to be logged into Biopsych. I'll start by showing you how to use the genome browser. There are several ways to access the genome browser. The easiest way is from the Tools menu. Go over to Genome and Genome Browser. This browser browses a single replicon. So if your organism has multiple replicons, for example, eukaryote chromosomes, you'll see a page to select one first. Once you enter the browser, you'll see a representation of the first 50,000 or so bases on the replicon. The lower part of the display shows genes occurring in those first 50,000 bases. Genes are colored according to operon membership, so adjacent genes in the same color are on the same operon. The display also sh shows regulators and their sigma factors. Pseudogenes and phantom genes are shown with X's through them, and have differently shaped arrowheads. This is an RNA coding gene. The arrowhead is not in the middle, but towards the top of the gene, and it's a very short gene. The chromosome region that is currently displayed is mapped in red. It's right near the origin of replication. I can move that region left or right using these buttons. The single buttons move, move that region a little, and the larger buttons move it a lot. The vertical buttons zoom in and out. And as you move in, zoom in, more details are shown. I can also zoom out to see what we call the genome overview by clicking here. And here we see almost the entire E. coli genome. Each of these boxes is one gene. Boxes that point left or right are protein coding genes, while downward pointing quadrilaterals like this one are RNA coding. Again, colors represent operon membership, and the bars below indicate transcript extants from our transcription unit information. If I go back to the genome level, I can change the displayed region by changing the base pair coordinates and clicking the Go button. Now the view is centered on that gene and its segment is shown with hash marks. You can see a transcription factor binding site in front of FOB and I can roll over it to show some details. I zoom into the sequence level, and we'll see the base pair sequence and the translation of the coding strand. Besides the main and gene pages, I can access the genome browser from the replicon listing that appears in the summary statistics in the tools analysis menu. Next, I'll show you how to use the Comparative Genome Browser. I'll do a quick search for the gene TRPA. Take me to a search results page and I'll select the gene from there. Now I'm on the genes page. This gene produces the alpha subunit of the tryptophan synthetase enzyme. In the operations menu, on the right, under comparison operations, I find the command align in multi-genome browser. This brings up a dialog with two lists of organism databases. The one on the left is similar to the chooser for the main 
choose organism database command on the top of every page. The one on the right is a list of organisms that you want to compare. Notice that the list on the right starts with the current organism, in this case K12, in this case E. coli K12 MG1655. I use the chooser on the left to add a few organisms. For each organism, I enter a portion of the name and select the organism from the list of completions. The organisms listed in bold in the comparison in the compl the organisms listed in bold in the completion list have ortholog data available. Here's the one I want, and clicking on it as it's the list. I'll go ahead and add three more. Now that I've added four additional organisms to the selection, I could clear uh, my list of choices or remove single entries. Once I have a list, I can save the organism list in my account as a name list by entering the name here. and clicking Save. Save lists can be retrieved using the My Lists tab in this dialog. The list can also be viewed as, as a smart table. Now I click on the OK button and the multi-genome browser appears. This view shows the segment of the genome for each species centered on its previously computed ortholog for TRPA. Note that Francisella only has a pseudogene uh, TRPA Note that the genes are colored by ortholog groups, not operons, as in the regular genome browser, but clearly the synteny TRPA and an ortholog of TRPB is present in most of these organisms. Likewise, several organisms have orthologs for TRPC, TRPD, and TRPE. Grayed out gene symbols are genes that don't have an ortholog visible in the main organism, the one at the top. Like the genome browser, you can zoom in and out and rolling the mouse over a gene, which has a pop-up window with more information about the gene and a link to its gene and product page. Biopsych supports two tools for searching for sequences, BLAST and PATMAT, under the search section of the main tools menu. The BLAST tool is fairly standard, so I'll only give a brief overview. You can start a BLAST search from several pages. You can start from the search section of the main tools menu or start from an existing page or protein sequence from a gene page. I'll demonstrate from a gene page. Now TRPA is not a good choice for paralog searches, so I'll demonstrate with a group of duplicated valinine tRNA genes, one of which is ValT. So I'll do a quick search for ValT. Get to its home page and select Blast the nucleotide sequence over here on the right sidebar menu. And it takes me to the BLAST search page with the FASTA for the gene sequence loaded into the sequence window. If I had started from the main menu, I would need to paste the sequence into this window. I can run the BLAST against a single organism, either the current organism, or I can select a different organism, or I can BLAST against all the biocytes. I can specify the sequence type and what sort of sequence is to BLAST against, and specify several BLAST search parameters. When I click search, it returns a report listing significant hits and links to the genes in these hits. Here we see a group of five identical duplicates of this tRNA for valine in different locations of the genome. So this, uh, these BLAST results are suggested that this gene has been duplicated relatively recently. PatMatch is an expressive tool for finding occurrences of a short sequence pattern. I'll go to the PatMatch page under the Main Tools menu under the Search section under Sequence Pattern Search. The pattern language allows us to search for exact amino acids or nucleotides or uses a language that lets us represent patterns that refer to sets of nucleotides or amino acids 
pattern sequence is summarized in the table at the bottom of this page. So I'll demonstrate a simple nucleotide search. I'll start the sequence with the exact sequence ATGC. Then, since n refers to any base, I'll add four characters and end with ATCG. So now I'm essentially looking for a sequence that ends in ATCG, preceded by any four nucleotide sequences preceded by ATGC. I can search one or both strands and also define the scope of the search. The entire set of coding sequences, or the whole genome, or the intragenomic regions are against intragenic regions, plus additional flanking sequences on each side. There are additional search options right here to limit the number of searches. But I'll run my search, and we get 229 results, and each result is described in this table. And if I click on a link to gene name, it will open the genes page in a new browser tab. Now I'll return to the TRIP-A gene page to show you how to retrieve protein and nucleotide sequences. Now I've returned to the TRIP-A gene page to show you how to retrieve protein and nucleotide sequences. These operations are in the right sidebar menu. To obtain the amino acid sequence of the TRIP-A genome, I simply click Protein Sequence, and the sequence is shown here. To save the protein sequence to a file, I can click on the menu command Save Protein Sequence to File, and it saves the file, and here it is in text edit on my Mac. To obtain the nucleotide sequence of gene, or in fact any genome region, I'll click on Nucleotides. We see the sequence of the gene in the background window, but there's another dialog window that's popped up. This dialog window allows me to select any sequence in this replicon. The initial settings in this window will retrieve the sequence of the coding region for this gene, but I can tweak those settings to retrieve a completely different region by changing these numbers or to retrieve additional flanking sequence. For example, I'll change the upstream field to add 100 additional bases and the downstream side to add 200 additional ba downstream bases, and then we'll see the resulting sequence. Note that the ATG start codon is downstream of the start of the displayed sequence, and that the stop codon is also highlighted in red down here. You can save the nucleotide sequence to a file, but that command doesn't support adjusting the sequence start and end. Finally, I'll introduce Biosyc's multiple sequence alignment facilities. As with the other pages in this webinar, there are multiple ways to start a multiple sequence alignment analysis. In each case, Clustal Omega is used for computing alignments and MSA Viewer is used for displaying alignments. Let's go back to the TRIP-A page and I'll show you how to show an alignment using all the orthologs of a given gene from the current organism comparison set by starting at the, at the gene page. The command is align gene nucleotide sequence with orthologs. This brings up a multiple sequence alignment display using MSA Viewer. You can find out more about MSA Viewer at their web page, which we link to, but I'll demonstrate some of the features here. The viewer shows each sequence as a row with labels for each orthologous gene, consisting of the database ID followed by the gene ID. Each location has the nucleotide letter and a color, and above the grid are icons that indicate the proportions of each nucleotide at each location across the orthologs. Below the icons are the index of the location, and then a scroll control for navigating across the alignment. The menu above the matrix has commands for adding and removing components to the display and changing the color scheme. The sorting button provides a number of options for ordering the rows. And the selection button provides a sequence search that supports regular expressions. There is a command under the extras menu to add a row containing this consensus sequence. 
Note that the help command links to the MSA viewer project pages and of these the user guide will be the most useful. We include a summary of the commands in our website user guide, which is linked to just above the MSA viewer display. I'll return to the gene page and show the alignment of amino acid sequences for a set of orthologous proteins with the aligned gene product amino acid sequence with orthologs. The amino acid alignment view is similar to the nucleotide, except that the graphics and color schemes are more complex, reflecting